Hey, what's the damn deal? It's your boy Chet Low, Nacho, saying true spill. Welcome back. Shit, got the homie G Low, George Lopez. Man, if you don't know who George Lopez is, y'all need to do your, your damn research. He's a motherfucking Dallas legend, Dallas pioneer, Dallas OG. Shit, welcome to the show, bro. Appreciate you coming through, man. Oh, dude, yes, sir, yes, sir. So, yeah, George, you know, I just want to chop it up with you. Shit, uh, let these people know what, what it is. Uh, Shit, how long you been in the game for, bro? I know you've been in it for a minute, but I want you to let these people know how long you've been in the game. Usually, shit, yeah. man, I've been music all my life, bro. Yeah. All my life, shit, since I was fucking 11 years old, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. my uncle was a DJ, so yeah. he turned me on to the whole music shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Being a DJ, just loving the different kinds of music, but as far as like the... Being on the retail end, yeah. got into retail in 94, got into the label like in 98, you know what I'm saying? And, been marketing in between, you know what I'm saying? Because marketing was my thing. I just yeah, like yeah. networking with people and, you know, put people, you know, with other people, you yeah, know, yeah. working, making money together. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I've been doing that shit for the longest. Yeah, you said you started uh, doing the music in 94. Is that when you started T Town? The retail, yeah, 94. Retail? Yeah, so T Town started in 94. 94, we're still there. Yeah, yeah, still yeah. There, I see bro. that, man. Congratulations. I know you've been there for a minute, bro. Yeah, appreciate shit. it. I remember going back in the day when yeah. I was still in middle school, high school, bro. Yeah. Like, man, we gotta go get that new DSR tape. <laughs> we used to be over there, bro. Shit. Had everything, bro. Yeah, 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 I remember getting all the DSR tapes back in the day. I remember I got a story, bro, one of them, uh, but uh, I don't know about to tell it. I was with one of my partners. We went to T Town and man, this this nigga got some shit in the parking lot with some other niggas. Yeah. You know, and some shit happened. We had to jet out. Oh shit, I had to grab my CD, my new CD. Yeah. They just got from you. It was the, uh, what was it called? The Stars and Stripes, I think. It, it was like American flag in the background and, and, and all the DSR on that bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't understand. Exactly. It was that one, bro. Yeah. It was that one. Double CD. That's a classic, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's Man, I wish classic. I still had it. I lost a lot of CDs, bro. Yeah. But that was, that, that hope was jamming. You could have pressing those up a yeah. long time ago. Bro. I think that was freestyles, right? Yeah, all like, freestyles. All Double freestyles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of them homes back in the day, yeah, bro. we used all the beats from Dipset. Yeah. At the time. Yeah, we yeah. We big Dipset. Back yeah, back. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what's up here, yeah, bro. Shit, um, keep us away. What happened at the store at the at the thing? Oh, it was just it was just some shit happened. Uh, I, got you, I got you. We we pulled up. We long, I got long story short, we we pulled up. We went inside. We went to tea time. We about to see. We're about to leave. One of my homeboys got into with somebody else. Uh, and, I got you. And some shit happened. We like had a, like work. I got you. Yeah, some shit happened. We just ooh, we had to we had to get out of there, bro. It was just yeah. it was just some crazy shit. You know how it goes back in the day, but. You know how who I was with, Flacco. You know who I was with, but when it smoked out, oh, yeah. yeah, just you know how that nigga is, bro. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, bro. So uh, yeah, so we still going strong. T time. T yeah, time still strong, bro. Yeah. We still holding it down. We still there, man. Right now we doing we do a lot of custom stuff, bro. Yeah. Because a lot of people can't find certain music, so they come yeah. to us like, look, man. I'm looking for a lot of old shit that I can't find. Yeah. But I tell a lot of my customers, like, yo, just give me a list of what you yeah. want. Yeah. We'll find it for you. Yeah. Do, do you, you, you make like a custom mix? You make them a custom mix yeah. table, we go online and find the album. Yeah, you know? for sure. Like That's you the original of, album, we'll yeah. find it on eBay or something. We'll find it for you. If not, then we'll make them a custom CD. Okay, can you make like custom like music video DVDs too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we do all that shit. We all got that. custom DVDs, yeah. we got custom USBs, yeah. Yeah. we got all that Obviously shit. Obviously for the boys with the slabs, with the yeah. screens, y'all yeah. yeah. need them DVDs, shit, y'all go holler at my boy yeah, Chilo at Tea Time, man. Or the rappers or whatever, trying to do something different and package up some type of deal. Yeah, I don't see the homie right here. Right here, bro. Let me ask you this, man, as far as like, because you talked 94, obviously it's a different era, different game. Yeah. And you've been able to evolve, man. Is it, yeah. what is it that that's outside from the business side that kept you in the game? Longevity. As man. far as the music, because you seem to differ. You could probably explain to the people yeah. as far as how, how it's changed so man, much. I've only lasted this long because I've networked with everybody. I ain't burn no bridges. You know what I'm saying? People always burn bridges and they lose respect. Mm. They lose their word. And I've always got to keep my shit, you know, yeah. all this time. So, you know, bless God, man. Uh, I made one with everybody, so a lot of my customers keep coming. Yeah. People that I do business, they keep fucking with me. Yeah. That's why I'm still in the business for so long because I've kept it 100. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Regardless of what you hear on social media, you always gonna hear people you know, talk about this person, that person. Yeah. But a people can't be doing, a person can't do the same shit for so many years and still making money out here if, if it was all that. Yeah, so, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm telling you, yeah. man. True. I've kept it True. A1. 
I kept it 100. A lot of my customers still come back here that I work with and do business with. They still fuck with me, so that's why we still, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Say so you keep it real, people gonna keep coming back. Yeah, that type yeah. Of shit. yeah, yeah. That's what's up, bro. Yeah. Shit, I got a lot. Of, I got a couple questions for you, bro. Oh, shit. I mean, y'all already told me how you got into managing the music. You said uh, your camp up was a DJ. Did you used to DJ too? Yeah, my yeah. uncle was a DJ, bro, and uh, he showed me how to DJ. So. Uh, I was DJ, bro. Yeah. I was doing house parties and shit, no clip yeah. every weekend, bro. Yeah, yeah. I was up there on Falls and Dutton and oh, okay. Westmoreland Heights and shit. Yeah, that's I was up in my shop at now. Yeah, yeah, bro. Falls and Westmoreland. That's yeah, crazy. I used to go to the Bardillas yeah. all the time, yeah. hang out and buy yeah. some music and shit. But yeah, I was over there. I was on Polk Street yeah. doing uh, the warehouse over there. I was fucking with a bunch of different DJs from yeah. back in the day, man. How was the music scene back then? Oh, man. The music scene, you know, I wasn't doing the business part back then. But I was just in the DJ shit, bro, and the club shit. So I was DJing nightclubs back yeah. then. You know, I was young. I went from house parties to nightclubs. Yeah. So that was fun, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, when it becomes business, it becomes more of a headache. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, even though you have to have the business side, the business side is always gonna be a headache, man, because yeah. there's always someone trying to screw you over yeah, or something, yeah. or someone doesn't tell you what you don't ask, yeah. so you don't know. Yeah. But I mean, as far as just being in the music in the music game and and DJ at the time, that was fun. When it became a business, it became more of a headache than anything. Bro. Do you think that kind of like helped prepare you to kind of like more like step more into the game type shit? Like, uh, man, I, I, I would touch you a little song. When, when, when me and my cousin, we made the, the label T Town yeah. Music, bro, in 98, yeah. uh, we wanted more. Yeah. At that time, we wanted more. Yeah. You know, we, we both had our own businesses going, but we wanted more. Yeah. And we wanted to get more serious with the music, so we became a label. And we put out two compilations. Yeah. We put out the I-45, yeah. we put out North to the South, which yeah. is major numbers, bro. And then that was 98, 99, 2000, 2001, so yeah. we decided to do DSR. Yeah, so, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that did great numbers. So we just we just got more in debt with the business side yeah, yeah. Uh, at that time. Yeah. But you know, the only reason we got in debt with it is because we wanted more in the music business. We already yeah, yeah. loved it. Yeah. Being a part of being a part of the music. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know how hard it was gonna be yeah. until years later into the game. Cause you know when you start shit out, you're all excited. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you, when it becomes like five, six years deep, like yeah. damn, I'm tired of shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a headache, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Cause you yeah, get burnt yeah, out yeah, on all the I, BS I, that I goes with that shit. Yeah, yeah. Every business got some BS, yeah, bro. Yeah. So it's true. like you know, 2001, we have a great time, we're making yeah. money. 2000, you know, five, we get the deal with Universal. 2006, seven, eight, nine. Business is doing good, the label's doing good, the artist is doing good. 2010, it just becomes a headache, bro. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I don't even want to do this tea time shit yeah, anymore. Yeah. So my cousin, you know, he, he started, he did NPR. Yeah. You know, it was him and Tom. That, that was, Trini, right? Trini, cousin, cousin Trini, yeah. yeah, it was like, he, yeah. he, he, did, uh, he did NPR records, yeah. bro. And it was like basically uh, Tum Tum and, and Fat B and then uh, Lil Ronnie and them. And then- uh, Shout out Lil Ronnie. Tuck. Tuck was like, bro, I'm chilling, bro. Yeah. Like, whenever you want to do some work, bro, just holler at me. Because, you know, I'm not really trying to do that. I'm trying to just chill, too. Yeah, yeah. So he was just chilling, bro. And we had just released that, not a stain on me, so that record oh, was, you know, was starting to take yeah, off yeah. at the time. But I, I mean, as far as the label, I just didn't want to do the label thing no more. It was just a headache ha having a business, yeah. like a corporate business, bro. Yeah. I had to deal with people in LA and New York all the time, every day. A lot of phone calls. Phone calls, uh, bro. Politicking type yeah, shit. And yeah, and it's like, I'm not a yeah. politicking person, yeah. bro. It is what it is, a yeah, that's it. Don't try to come at me with some other bullshit, bro. And it was just a lot of BS, bro. So I, I got burnt out, bro. And I stepped away. But before I did that in 2010, I got into nightlife. Yeah. I started doing nightclubs in 2008, 2009. Yeah. So 2010, when I lived in T-Town, yeah. I started running all these nightclubs in downtown Dallas. Was that when your sister would be at the She'd be at the store. Oh, She'd yeah, be at the yeah, store. Because I remember going around, yeah. I think around that time, and I think I'd see your sister. I'd chop it up with your sister. Well, my sometime. sister and uh, her friend, they were running my shop pretty much from 2000. Six on, bro. Mm -hmm. Two thousand six on. They were two thousand five on. Yeah, they were running because I was never there. We were always on the road with the guys. Yeah, yeah. But when I started doing the nightlife, I was really never at the shop. Mm -hmm. I just started doing the clubs and stuff. Shout and out to them. And my sister's been holding it down since day one. Shout out to yeah, sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. seeing up there all the time. Yeah, shout shout out to Name was Georgia. Skyline. She, had, she was Skyline too. Skyline. Bro. Bro. Shout out to Skyline was, Raiders. Yeah, I was always called the Skyline. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I'm a Samuel Gladiator. Yeah, I'm a good gladiator. Uh, bro, uh, what clubs did you have at the time? I had, I had a plush. I had a. Yeah. I had a. Tote. Mm -hmm. I had a, the bank. 
I had a uh, Brivaldo. Wow. I had a uh, actor. Man, I remember Plush. Was it like downtown yeah. Maine? Yeah, okay. Two yeah, story yeah, that yeah. club. I had college nights. Yeah, I remember Plush, Plush, bro. Yeah. And I had a cross yeah. street. There was a, there was a couple of clubs, Carpet DM. Mm-hmm. I had a bunch of clubs. Man. Did you ever have anything on Greenville? Greenville? Lord Greenville. I had a Hotel Capri. Okay, yeah. Hotel I think Capri I across from that pizza place. Yeah, from Slug. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember yeah, because uh, uh, there was the Sim Bar was down the street. Yeah, so that Sim yeah. Bar. I was at Eight Lounge. Yeah. Uh, at Eight Lounge, I, was, I hang out at, Sopr- at Sopranos. Yeah. For a while. Yeah, I remember Sopranos. I, yeah. I, I might have seen you there a couple of times. Yeah, Because yeah. back in the day, around that time, I, I stayed on Lower Green. Man, bro. everybody, that was a spot. 180. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember how many spot. times I got picked out of 180, bro. And yeah, good thing about that, you can keep that one play, you can cross into the next club. Yeah, yeah. man, let's go, let's go next door. Yeah, we're talk to man afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be grubbing, throw, throw yeah. and shit. What, what do you prefer, man? The the music or the, or the, the club scene or the business? Man. You know what? I'm, uh, I've always loved the music, the music scene, bro. Even though it gives me headaches, bro. I don't think I'll ever get away from the music scene, bro. The clubs, I liked it because the money was good, but the clubs have changed, bro. And you can't charge at the door no more. Oh, no shit. Man, a lot of these clubs don't charge at the door at all, bro. Shit. Niggas, you know, everyone's getting free now. No so shit. it's like the money's not the same. Yeah. You know, a couple years ago, everybody would pay. Right. And you walk home with a lot of money, bro. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's like hardly anybody pays the clubs yeah. now. So it's God, like, man, to me, it's not no worth it. Shit. It's like, it's not worth having all these headaches where you can only charge 20% of the people. Back then, 100% of the crowd, they come in the door paid. Now it's like, most of the clubs are free now. You know what I'm saying? So, but as far as the music scene, even though I, I want to let it go, bro, it's still attached to me, bro. Cause like I said, to me, it's easy, bro. Yeah. It's easy, I can yeah. be asleep and I can do it from my phone. Yeah. I can do it with a phone call. So man, it's easy. Phone. Cause like I said, I got so many connections, yeah. bro. Yeah. And it's like, I can call someone to help me out. Like, yeah. yo, you know, if I have an artist who wants to go to the radio station, I can make a phone call to mm-hmm. someone at the station. Y'all send them home, over, yeah. bro. Take care of them. Yeah. If my homie wants to, de- you know, perform at a car show, yeah. I can call the promoter of the car show. Hey man, yeah. my boy wants to be on your car show. It's like the connection I got is just they're there, bro, and I can put them to use easily. So that's business. Yeah. It's always money making. Yeah, yeah. You know, even though I get tired of it, you never get tired of making money. Yeah, yeah, so because it's so easy. <laughs> but I mean, if it was hard to make money, I'd be like, you know what, I don't even want to do it. But yeah. I'm at a point in my life, it's just it's easy to make that money. You know, it's just so like social. Yeah, it's like naturally. social media. I don't want it, yeah. but it makes money. Yeah. It makes money. Yeah. Social Same media, way, bro. It makes us money. It's a headache too, bro. If I, if I needed to promote, I wouldn't have social media, but shit, you needed to promote and get out there type yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems like you're always going to be in the music too, because I mean, I, I didn't know that. I've just learned a lot about the OG. I heard a lot about him growing up, DSR, but yeah, you, you talked about you were uh, up in Funky Town, yeah, right? For, for sure. Yeah. Talking about, uh, you know, you're DJing parties and yeah. mixtapes and, and all that shit. Yeah. Now you do the USBs and just, that's, that's yeah, dope. We, we do the mixtapes. We got, we got a series called Block Bangers Mixtapes. So if you go to any retail store or pool guys or yeah, well, even gas station, yeah. bro, yeah. you see a Block Banger mixtape. I did those. Bro. I remember those. And even now they're bootlegging yeah. the shit. I just got a phone call from Waco, bro. Someone's bootlegging my shit. Yeah, Waco. he actually did. That shit you know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Behind the scenes shit. Yeah. Yeah. Is that still like a big problem? Like these it's, days? It's, like, it's always going to be a problem, yeah. bro, because people want shit for free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like like if you're the hottest rapper bro and you're selling your CDs for five and you're hot mm. and this nigga can make some money off of you mm. he's just gonna burn your shit for a dollar and sell your shit he's gonna burn it so yeah. you can put put your face on it type yeah. shit. why are you gonna pay you five when yeah. he can burn it for a dollar and sell it he gonna cut you out yeah so that's how it is that's yeah. how this game is bro yeah and it's fucked up man but it is what it is this is where we at in yeah. these days yeah. so it's like i mean there's always gonna be a problem but you just you can't contain it mm. You can just try to be like, yo, bro, you know, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's all you can do. So, what was, some, what was some of your favorite artists growing up? Man, you know, I got, I was, I was blessed to work with Master P for four or five years. Oh, man. No shit. Yeah, you know, I got to work with him from like '95 or 2001. Oh, when he was coming he, up. He was coming from New Orleans to Dallas, and he was promoting No Limit. He was going to L.A., so he was, he was always coming by with product, mm-hmm. flyers, posters. CDs yeah. and I love his music so yeah. he would always leave me product and I would flip the product and then I got to a point where I wasn't buying 30s and 50s no more he was like look man, here's a box of 200 give me the bulk yeah, yeah. I, mean, I come yeah. back next week so give me the bread yeah. boom it was done so I was dealing a lot of stuff with no living records yeah. man and that's where that that's where 
the AB just became my favorite, my favorite yeah. label, my mentor. It's like everything he did, that's what DSR did. Kind of laid the groundwork for what y'all did. I followed his blueprint. Yeah. I mean, we did the text blueprint. version, yeah. but I mean, I, everything he was doing, like traveling, moving, dropping our pieces, because it's like, the one thing about a lot of these artists, when they come out, bro, the first thing they tell me, like, man, who's going to buy my product, bro? They don't know who I am. And I tell them, just leave them the product. Man, it cost me money. Dude, leave them the product, bro, because they might, they might sell it, they gonna be like, you know what? I need more. Yeah. They might like it if they hear it, but if you don't, if you just leave with it, they're never gonna hear you. You never giving them a chance. So what I did, no limit. They were dropping off tons of product everywhere, bro. So what I did when DSR came out, no one knew who DSR was. So we went to man over three hundred stores, bro. In, in like in the Dallas area, whole, no, whole south, the whole south, the whole south. 300 stores, I mean, we're talking about from Arizona, New Mexico, to Oklahoma, Arkansas, to Memphis, to, to Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. Mm. We went to every store, bro, and we just gave every store 30 pieces. Mm. Like, hey man, can we just leave these on consignment? Yeah, yeah, we don't do consignment, mm. we'll do it. I said, just leave it, bro. I said, when I come back around, I check on it, bro. This is what I want for them. And if you sell them, cool. Yeah. If not, that's cool, I pick them up. Mm. And when I come back around, I like, hey, where's those 30 pieces? Oh man, we sold them, bro. They some more. Where's the credit? Give me that money. Boom, boom. Yeah. And all of a sudden, man, I'm going back around picking up thousands of dollars from different stores. Bad enough, bad and, then, enough, and then all yeah. of a sudden, they're calling me like, yo, ship me 100, ship me 100. Yeah, so yeah, now I'm shipping. Suck. I just had to build that relationship with them because they didn't know us. I didn't know them, but I, I, I took a chance because that was an outlet to make money. So I'm like, you hey, bro, I'm going to trust you. I mean, if you steal them, man, it's just a dollar CD. I ain't tripping because right, right. if, if this other store sells all that product, I'm gonna make my money over here. I just know not to come back to this store. So I wasn't worried about the 30 pieces I was leaving because it's basically $30. And at the time, these were kind of like the mom and pop stores. Mom and pop stores. They were running yeah, shit, yeah, bro. Yeah. They were running shit. Yeah, they yeah. were killing these yeah, chain stores. Yeah. Kind of like the, what, what's one of all clear? The, the top 10 records? Yeah, it was like top 10. I was leaving like product in yeah. top 10. Yeah. Back then, you had Planet Rock Records. Mm -hmm. You know, you had rhythm tracks back then, yeah. no clip. You had a bunch of these records, bro. I was just leaving product, bro. Yeah. And they would sell so fast. Now they wanted some. Like now they wanted hundreds. They call you. Like, yeah, they bring me some more. Like no problem. They give me yeah. half the money. You know, yeah. it's like, cool. And then after yeah. half the money, now they start paying up front for the mm. for the product. So it was just to build a trust relationship yeah. with these guys. You how know? did uh deep? Because right right now I'm getting the visual as far as how you you know you spread like wildfire. How did how did a uh, wildfire? How did uh, DSR come about? How did how did that? Yeah, how did group come together? So tell us a story on the, that. The guys would always come by. Because one thing about my store, everybody knew my store like a No Limit store, so everybody would all buy the No Limit records. Oh, so a lot of these artists, they shot with me already. So when I started distributing Swisher House CDs and Slim Thug and Chameleon Paul Wall CDs at my store, and having those guys come by, sign autographs, all these rappers were coming by, but I don't know if they were rappers, they were just fans at the right. time. So one day I was like, look man, I'm looking for some artists, I'm gonna make a group. And Tum Tum was already going to the store because he was a Swisher House fan, he was a No Limit fan, so he was already going up there. Fat B was already going up yeah. there. So all these all these DSRs were already going through before I knew they were DSR. Oh, they were just were customers. They yeah. just go chill at the they spot. Go chill at the spot. Yeah. Oh, Watts is coming. Let me yeah. go meet Watts. Let me get a CD. Let me go meet Paul Wall. Let me go meet Slim Thug. They were already coming to the shop. Yeah. So when I put the word out, I was looking for a group. They came by. I said, bro, let's, you know what? Let me, you, 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 let's go to the studio, record something. If I like it, let's fuck around. Just straight freestyle. And from there, man, I took him to the studio. We freestyled. I liked it. Yeah. I said, shit, I got a plan. This is the plan. Yeah. DSR. Just like that, bro. So he's kind of like. Who, who was it? Who, who my bad. Who, 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 was, who was it? It was, uh, you, you, it was the Tum Tum and you had Double T, Addiction, Lil Ronnie, Fat B, and Tuck. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Those, those, those are the guys, man. I mean, we had other rappers that came through Tamien, and they were they, they were part of the, the, the first two mixtapes, maybe the first three mixtapes. And then after that, so you know what? I'm just going to concentrate on that the six the guys. Part. And it, was that because they were the most dedicated, or you seen the most out of them? The most dedicated, plus they were Attention. all different. They were all different. People are like, oh man, all those guys sound the same. No, nah, man, if you really Good. sit down and if you're a music guy, you sit down, you can tell that Tuck is different artist from Tum Tum. Yeah. Tum Tum is a different artist from Fat B. Tuck different from Fat B is a different artist from Lil Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. Addiction, Double T, you know what I'm saying? All of them, they're all different artists, bro. Fat all B. of them, you know? So it's like everybody brought something different to the table. And that's one thing that I knew that a lot of people didn't know. Yeah. They didn't know there was a group coming out. But, I, but me and Trini, we would always just see that in them like, bro, these guys are special because they all bring something different. People always thought, oh, it's just one group. They all sound the same. Nah, bro. Nah, because I had one thing about Dallas. Dallas is so talented. There was a lot of artists in Dallas that I liked. 
But these six guys here, they all brought something different, bro. And at that time, they were hungry, bro. They wanted to just do something, bro. And we just, we got it every day, man. Yeah. Like, if I say, hey, man, 10 o'clock, meet me in Oak Cliff. We at the studio, I got six, seven folk. Yeah. Right behind Granny's, boom, they were there. 10 yeah. o'clock, we did it till four, five in the morning, knocking out mixtapes. Yeah. I'm like, hey, Friday, meet me, meet me here. We're gonna go to Houston. We're gonna go to Louisiana. We're gonna go to Memphis. They were there. How long would it take out to like finish one mixtape? Like one night, one night, one night. Just bro. just play the beats and everybody play the beats. jump in the booth. Just, uh, what I would do, time. I would give them the beats. Let's say Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. So here's here's the here's the beats, bro. Y'all write to them. Mm -hmm. I would give them like twenty five beats. And I said whatever one you like, mm -hmm. rap on it. So let's say let's say no limit. Let's say for example body body. Mm -hmm. So let's say we go to studio Friday night. And out of the six guys, only four guys write to Body Body. Yeah. Okay, y'all four guys, y'all put your verse on Body Body. So Body Body had four verses from four different guys. Yeah. The other two guys weren't on it because they, they didn't feel that yeah. record. They felt another record. And let's say they felt, they, they felt that uh, Nelly instrumental. Mm. Only two guys felt that record. Yeah. Well, y'all two on that Nelly record because they, they wrote to it. And that's how the certain that's people that's how on certain, on certain exactly. beats. Because someone like, oh, why was the so and so on this record? Yeah. He, he didn't like that record at yeah. the time. Because if he did, he would have wrote to it that yeah. night. When y'all yeah. write to it, we jumping on it. We were just knocking them out like yeah. that, bro. And it was just it was just a process that we yeah. had going, bro. And it was it was it was pretty badass, bro, because yeah. every month we dropped a new mixtape. Yeah. And and me and Trina were like, oh, we're gonna put visuals out. So instead of doing videos at the time, we put out flyers, bro, like twenty thousand flyers on every mixtape. Mm -hmm. We put out posters and then we, we pressed up the CDs, real CDs, yeah. and we're giving them away. So that was our visuals. The visuals. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, here you go, bump that shit now. It, now these days, like yo, my video's coming out next month. Yeah. Nah, the way we did it back then, like, here's my CD jam. That shit now. Yeah. If you don't like it, throw that bitch away. Yeah. Niggas like, hell no, I like that hoe. Yeah. Alright, next yeah. month I got another one. Yeah. Here you go. That was our promo. Yeah. Promos these days, like I'm ready to put a campaign together. That's yeah. these days. Yeah. We didn't do it's that shit. Different. Nah, it's a whole now. It's different. I mean, and it's good. Yeah. You know, it's good and bad, bro. And like. We had our run, we're doing our way, now there's a run for everybody to do their way. You know, it's all good, bro, like, everything's different. But, but uh, what I like, right, you, you painted the picture uh, for a hip hop head like myself, where as far as, I mean, it's not the same game, but no. I mean, you could take a lot of what you did and implement that as yeah. far as being, being original. Hey, was the Massacre Volume 1, was that the first? Freestyle Massacre Volume 1. Freestyle Massacre, that was the yeah. first joint y'all put out? Mm -hmm. And that was the one where y'all just freestyled other people's mm -hmm. shit? That's mm -hmm. dope, bro. Yeah, yeah dope if, you at, if you look at the freestyle master, mixtape shit. That was Big Tuck and a group of six guys. Tuck, uh, Tum Tum and Fat B went on that one. They oh, were on Body Two. Oh shit! Because at that time, Tum Tum and Fat B, they were in a clique called the Freestyle Heavyweights. Mm. You know, and when when they came in, we had already finished part one. So that was Tuck and, and a little group from South Dallas. And then then you had Tum Tum and Fat B come in, and they had a couple of guys with them. So that was volume two. By the time we got to volume three, we kind of put all of them together, mm -hmm. plus a couple other guys. Volume four, we kind of got rid of some guys. Volume five, it was just the six guys. Volume seven, it was just yeah. the six guys. And then after that, we quit doing the freestyle, started dropping albums. And then is that when the Universal deal came? Universal came here uh, three and a half years later, bro. We were blessed, bro, because a lot of labels, if you sit back and look at every person who got a deal back then, it took them six to seven, maybe eight years. For example, uh, you know what, I don't even want to use that scenario because I don't want to seem like I'm talking down on anybody, but it took a lot of labels, a lot of labels that were kicking ass, independent labels, it took them a long time to get a deal, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, if, in our situation, we're blessed because we, we came out at the end of 2001, and by 2005, people were just banging on the door trying to sign us. That's that word. We're, 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 we're blessed, bro. Well, I remember y'all were everywhere at, like in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I remember um, it was like 2003, 2004. I remember y'all pulled up the skyline. Mm -hmm. like, I'm like, oh, this off in the yeah. club. Yeah. Bro, all, all the youngsters were like, man, we going crazy. Oh, shit. Look that right here. Yeah, we pulled shit. up the band, bro. Yeah, y'all yeah, 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 was the band. Y'all was in front of the school. Yeah. Shit. I was like, hey, y'all want me to sign this shit? Yeah. Fucking uh, couch runners off, bro. I think, uh, <laughs> I'm like, bro, we just giving away free stuff. I think Tom Tom and Fat B, they signed my, my, my badge at the yeah. time. Yeah. I, it, shit, it was a good time. And bro. see, that's what we did. Yeah. My thing was always promotion and marketing. That, that's where my mentality was always at. So, Second was making money. With it. But first, it's like, okay, I, I'm going to lose money. It's not really losing, it's called investing. Investing. In it's like people say losing, like, I took an L. Yeah. Nah, nigga, you took a lesson. You didn't take a loss, you took a lesson. Mm -hmm. So my thing is when, when I was investing my money, 
I didn't say I was losing my money at first. I was investing my money because my thing is, we press up, let's say $5,000 worth of stuff. We could be CDs, posters, or flyers. We pull up to Skyline and give this shit away. People are like, hey, y'all giving that shit away? I'm like, nigga, these are 20,000 kids yeah. who don't know who DSR is. I think y'all did give you know what I'm saying? saying? We just gave away shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. And the next month, everybody, DSR, DSR. Yeah. Like, we, we, they didn't yeah. know who it was. Because at that time, they were just bumping the Houston music only. Yeah, the switch the house. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So we were, we were, for, we were horse feeding everybody. Yeah. Yo, check us out too. Yeah. Check us out too. I got Slim on our shit. You know what I'm saying? We got Paul on our shit. Yeah. We got so-so. We got all these art, Houston artists on our shit too. You yeah. know? So we started networking with different artists. And that's what kind of get, opened the doors for DSR to kind of get that, that publicity. Because we were doing a lot of stuff with Houston artists too. Mm -hmm. We were always networking with yeah. other artists yeah. at the time. It was, it's not like that. Dallas yeah. now where no one yeah. works with nobody. Yeah. It's not like that. Bro. I feel like it was more like easy to work people back then. It was like, like it was more love and like it was more love, real bro. shit, bro. It was love. It was a lot of love, bro, going on. At that time, though, too, I mean, you look at it, I think Dallas was trying to make a niche and you were smart enough to capitalize on. I gotta, you know, we gotta make somebody with the stamp other than Buki. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I mean? Buki and Lucci, bro, yeah, they were hot. Yeah. I was always pushing their product at my store, bro. K Rock, Good. you know, you, you had Cottonmouth and the Rally Boys, you had Pimster, you know what I'm saying? I was pushing the shit out of Pimster because, you know, I love his music too. Yeah. So, I mean, as a retailer, bro, I loved all their music, bro. Yeah. I, was, I was a fan of all these guys, bro. But I was just trying to do something different, bro. Yeah, but, yeah I mean, yeah, it, I did, bro. And, and, and every time the door would open for for interviews like this, yeah. I would always mention, bro. Yeah. It's not just DSR and that, bro. You got Pookie, Lucci, K Rock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got Pimster. You got the Rally Boys, Cottonmouth. You know, you, you know, you got all these guys, Big yeah. Ben. Yeah. You know, you got all these guys in Dallas, bro. Yeah. I was always mentioning that, bro, because everybody would always think, oh, DSR from Houston. Yeah. Nah, they from Dallas, bro. Well, who who else from Dallas? We'd have to go back and mention. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole different game now, bro. Like at that time, like when when I thought of Dallas, I thought of I thought DSR and Pookie. Like it was it was always y'all, bro. Yeah. Like shit, y'all y'all were the Dallas OGs to me. <laughs> yeah. Like y'all laid down the the blueprint for like Dallas foundation. artists, the foundation. Mm -hmm. And I think like y'all were like kind of like the Dallas like like the flow, the Dallas style type shit, bro. Yeah. 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 I mean, and luckily, bro. Like I said, our our style was cool, but Dallas had so much to offer. The boogie movement came in. Right, yeah, I remember that shit. Door. Yeah. That's around the same time yeah. too, right? Man, yeah, well, they, they, they came out after yeah. like 2005 because yeah. we started yeah. like 2000, 2005, and then the whole boogie movement like 2005 yeah. started going because you had yeah. you had Chief, my swag hitting, yeah, Chief, you know what I'm saying? You had Truly, Prince Chief, Rick, yeah. you know you had uh, yeah. Lil yeah. Will, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You had uh, man, what was the Fat, Fat, Fat Pimp. You know, you had all these great artists, you know, T-Cash, T -Cash, all, these, all these guys, bro, they were awesome, bro, so it's just like, it was so crunk, bro, because bro. Dallas had a lot to offer, and the uh, the eyes were all on Dallas. Now. Wasn't Dougie? Yeah, yeah that's, that's little weird. weird. That's little weird. And it's funny, because I, I'm just thinking random, because we, you know how that shit goes. Yeah. I think about uh, yeah. how Cali people, yeah. Cali Swag District, whatever oh, they were, yeah, they flipped that shit. They flipped that shit. They flipped that shit. Bro, like, you know, hey, but shout out to Cali. You know, yeah, we all love y'all, yeah, yeah, but I just yeah. thought about that shit because you were talking about that, how y'all were hot. Dallas was, was on the scene. Bro, the Dallas, the Dallas nightlife at that time was crazy. Yeah. During the yeah. Big Time Boogie era, was everybody big, was in out just boogie and jigging and shit. Yeah. I didn't do that, but yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You, you would see motherfuckers in the house just jigging like, Damn, like, yeah, it, was yeah, crazy. Crazy. It, was, it was it was a fun time. It was a fun time. Everybody was having a good time, bro. Yeah. Like I said, and like I said, everybody was. Everybody was seeing that shit because all eyes were on Dallas at the time. And yeah. it wasn't just about us at the time, it was about everybody. The whole movement with Dallas doing their thing. Uh, playing skills was a huge part. Oh yeah, story. true. Yeah. Forgot about yeah. that. They, yeah. they were yeah. producing yeah. a lot of records yeah. Yeah. at the time. You know, they were uh, they had Latino stand up. Yeah. That was a big record that for was them. A big record. Freaks. You know, yeah. they had a lot of stuff. So there was a lot of they had a lot of Latino artists, yeah. man. You had two code out there. You had a lot of artists, bro. A lot of Latino artists that were Shout coming out. out. Dog. Yeah, everybody, bro. Like I said, there's always artists coming out in Dallas that people don't see you in Latin MC too. And the difference between, you know, conversations like ours right now, the conversations that goes on with these new artists is like they don't they don't talk about history, bro. Yeah, it's like they, they talk they, about themselves they don't and that's history, bro. They don't, they don't pay homage, bro, to like the exactly, exactly. They, they want to talk about what they're doing only, yeah. like, bro. 
how did you be, be, get to become you? Yeah. Right. It came before you. You learned from yeah. somebody. Yeah. So mention those artists. Yeah. Like exactly. who are you listening to, bro? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who are you bumping? Who is yeah. your dad bumping shit. that got you on this yeah. shit? Yeah. Yeah. These new artists, they, they don't talk about that, bro. And I just think that Dallas artists need need, need to uh, talk about that more because I'm always, I'm like, oh, it's me. It's about me type shit. Bro. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that, I think that's the problem. We all need to work with network with each other more, and we all need to. Uh, Give each other flowers now, bro. Exactly. 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 Look, bro. Exactly. I'm rapping now because of this artist. And that in my area, my, my neighborhood, this is who we bump. Yeah. That's how the conversation needs to start exactly. with these yeah. new artists. Because a lot of new artists, we like them, but I'm like, man, who does he sound like? Who, yeah. who did he grow up to? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I hear a lot of artists from Atlanta, Houston. They mention their favorite artists and who grew, who they grew up with. But when you when you talk to a Dallas artist, they're like, oh man, you know, I, I just I just do me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on, bro, who you really listen to? Really? Well, they'll be like, oh, I listen to Tupac. Yeah. Like, man, you weren't even born, man. Come on, really? Shout out Pac. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm like, yeah. yo, keep it real, bro. Yeah. You know, your dad was listening to somebody five years ago, and that's who inspired you, bro. Just say it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Give the props up, man, because exactly. right now, Respect. everybody needs all that speaking, love. Speaking that love needs to stay here, bro. Yeah. That love don't need to be given out to everybody outside the yeah. city when there's love here, I mean. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, he come hard over here. Hey, you said he said uh, we need to give each other the flowers, bro. Yeah. Shit, I don't try to do it with you, man. So, like right. I said, you you laid down the blueprint for a lot of Dallas artists, man. Shit, you a Dallas OG. You wanted to do that, bro. Appreciate it. And I appreciate Pre you coming on the show. Yeah, hey, definitely going going yeah. hard to paint with the trill spill. You know, I just uh, just met the homie personally, but like I, I said off camera, uh, I knew who he was growing about uh, growing up. I knew about his story and. Just to hear him right now kicking game, man. I, I respect it because I see the. Yeah. Obviously, we already know the outcome because yeah. you already did it. Yeah. Now you're talking about it, but you're talking about giving people their flowers while they're here, yeah, man. Bro. Salute you speaking yeah, about I that trip. Hey, yo, this, this is Tris Bill right here, bro. Yeah, yeah. And this is me. He's kind of what I was talking yeah, about as yeah. far as off camera because we were talking about just because we just started out. Yeah. It's like not everybody's open. Like you, you know, you, you're easy to talk to. And you, you know what? The reason, the reason I'm open, bro, and, and people get mad at me all the time, people talk shit. I don't give a fuck, bro. Niggas will tell you, like, I don't like Lopez. I don't care. That's why I say what I want to say. You know what I'm saying? If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you know, I don't care. I'm not trying to make you mad at me, but at the end of the day, nigga, I, 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 done, this shit, I done this shit by myself. I'm doing it. Me and my cousin Trina, we did this shit by ourselves. No one, no one gave us this blueprint. No one gave us the money to do this shit. We all got it in the mud and got it. So to no one says, "Hey, George, I'm gonna yeah. take you to the top." Nah, nigga, we had to do that, do that shit ourselves. So, yeah. fuck what you think, what you heard. This is me for real, bro. Respect. And I just speak it the way we lived yeah. it, bro, because this is how we got it. And even now, people don't, they don't respect my opinion. Sometimes they're like, "Oh, George, you're old, you're old head, mm. you know, whatever, man." It's a whole new game. Like, nigga, you gotta respect the old heads, exactly, bro. Who's cutting yeah. checks? Like, yeah. Jay Z. Kanye, nigga, all the OGs are cutting checks. True time, so we gotta respect that, bro. But that's where it's that's lost. What you, that's yeah. where it's lost in the city yeah. right now. It's like, bro, these old heads yeah. running the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got these guys that are running the radio stations, nigga. They old, but they run the game. Cause yeah. if you want to get your shit played, boom. Who's running? Who's running Apple? Who's running Spotify? Who's running Google? These old heads, yeah. nigga. So respect that shit, bro. OG. So you know, come off right, bro. Just give you props, yeah. bro. Just you know, be be for real, bro. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to be that hardcore keep, tough keep guy. Keep it one hundred. Keep it one. Yeah, bro. Like these guys, they ain't trying to keep it one hundred. Trying to be all. You can laugh like, sometimes, bro. Yeah, you, you can, can laugh. laugh you can smile. You know what I'm exactly. saying? You can joke. Exactly. It's all good, bro. Yeah. You know, you ain't got to be yeah. hard all the time, bro. I'm hugging everybody. Yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah, I see that shit all the time. Yeah. It, like, it makes me think of the homie. I was talking about uh, the homie Rand, where he's like, what you think is going to be hard when you're eating your cereal? For real. Yeah. Nigga, mugging nigga, with nigga fighting food. Eating, <laughs> eating Lucky Charms, just mugging motherfuckers type yeah. shit. Yeah, nah, bro. Man, I got a soft side on me, bro. You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not like I used to be, bro. I admit that, bro. But at the same time, I've been that same dude that's going to keep it 100. I got my same friends from the 80s and 90s yeah. and 2000s that I've had that I still got now. Yeah. Because like I said, I'm not tripping money or no money. I mean, we're still together, bro. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when he's down, I'm down. If I'm, if I'm up, he's up. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of cats, bro. It just, it's not, they're not built the same, bro. Yeah. This, this whole new generation not built the same. Unfortunately, yeah. And I try, and that's why I kind of speak this because they don't want to hear the shit. I'm like, bro, come on, bro. Mm. Come on, bro. Change your ways, bro. Yeah. Quick. You don't have to be hard all the time, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, you can be soft, bro. Yeah. At the same time, nigga, you ain't got to be number one. You can be all y'all niggas together. Exactly. Everybody gets to see that same time. Yeah, everybody gets together, get yeah. this to the pie. 
And, and then people get mad at me for that. They're like, ah, Joe, he tripping. Nah, nigga, I'm not tripping, bro. I'm just telling the real shit, because this is how I did it for years. I had no problem, nigga, I'm still good. You you tripping because your idea is different, but you're still young, so you don't know. I'm, I'm lucky to been talking about this shit for years and I'm still here talking about it, so it's worked out for me, I think it'll work out for you too. Yeah. So that's why I try to tell a lot of these artists, like, bro, chill yeah. out with that other yeah. shit, bro. With all the hating and, and all this, I'm me, I'm number one, I did this shit myself. Yeah, nah, yeah. Man, who got you here, bro? Name them niggas, man. Shit, Name them niggas with shout outs too, bro. Shit, bro. Hey. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, keep it real, bro. Yeah. You know? Bro, she talking about keeping real shit. I mean, you always came to real with me, you know shit. I, I met you a couple years back, yeah. and when I was barely starting in the game, and you always showed me love. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember when, when I dropped like my second, third CD. Like you let me, you let me do a little CD release party. Yeah, yeah. Time, bro. I remember that. So I always remember that, bro. I appreciate that for real. Man. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember I called you like yeah. saying, bro, your shit bumping over here, yeah. bro. You come do a pop up, yeah, bro. Man. You like really like, yeah, they come do a pop up. You yeah, like, man. I'm not just like, nah, nigga, just come do a yeah, pop up. You was me, bro. And I really appreciate that. I remember I used to take my CDs over there, yeah. and you showed me love. You would let me take my CDs over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Do your thing, bro. So, Make some money, bro. I always remember that, bro. I, I appreciate that, man. No, my nigga, cause yeah. it's like people don't understand. Like, okay, what year was that? Man, this was like fucking 2014. Okay, so 2014, 2014 yeah. I'm doing my thing. Yeah. I'm doing okay. Yeah. Let's say 2015, yeah. you at the Grammys. Yeah. I'm like, man, I remember that nigga coming to my store, bro. We did a pop up my shop. Damn. Good for All you. of a sudden, this nigga's on stage. Shot to Lopez. Yeah, his nigga show That's, that's it. Love, baby. People don't see someone's future, bro. Yeah. Like me, I saw you because yeah. it's like. All of a sudden, everybody coming in buying your CDs. Like, man, let me call this nigga. Say, man, come do a pop up shop, bro. Yeah. The CDs are selling fast, bro. Come do something yeah. in your shop. Yeah. Niggas don't see that, bro. They don't see what I see. Yeah. Like, if I see something big, I'm like, this thing about to blow. Let me let me let him do something right now because when it gets too big, he'll be like, man, fuck, bro. Open his dick over there, man. He ain't gonna let me do shit over there. Hey, but you hear that a lot, man, because yeah. we keep in the trail. You hear that about, and I know I've, it's been like that for me. When you meet people, sometimes they're not. They don't live up to the expectation yeah. of what you think they are. Yeah. And homie right here, like definitely. Shit, low fit, low fit, Li living up day, to bro. it. I always show love. I always get the 100. Yeah, yeah man. For real, for real. Shit, I, met, I remember I met you before that too, though. It was at a, it was in the Grove. You were there making fajitas. Man. I we got, oh, oh, I saw it. We had like a little, yeah, little it was black a, party or something. I think you were the godfather or somebody I knew or mm -hmm. some shit like that. Oh, that was yeah. before I even started doing music. I'm, you know? I'm on the grill. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Okay. Homie Love is on the grill, just get it down and shit, bro. A, a, a man with a mini hat, businessman, music man, cook tell you, man, I was, and get it down the pajitas. I tell you, man, I, I was just, I was just, I was just, in, I was just in a spot where I was just comfortable, bro. And I was like, I had no worries, bro. I, I wasn't the type of nigga that had to be looking on my shoulder all the time, nigga, because yeah. it's like. I didn't have I didn't have that problem. Bro. Yeah. It's like I kept it 100 with everybody, so I expected everybody to keep it 100 with me. Yeah. So it's like I could have cookouts and yeah, yeah. Then the whole neighborhood come out and be yeah. chilling. Yeah. And come hang with me and pitch in and have a big ass yeah. party. That's cool. So you're at peace because you I'm want at peace. Because you want. And a lot of people can't do that, bro. Because people they shit on people, yeah. bro. Or they don't give someone else yeah. a chance, bro. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't mind giving you a chance, but at the same time, if you're doing good shit, nigga, I'm all in with you, bro. Yeah. Now, if I give you a chance and you fucking up, like, nigga, I'm not fucking with you no more, bro, because you, you, you fucking up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. If, you, if you out there and you and you getting bigger and bigger, I'm like, bro, I'm telling everybody, like, man, this nigga right here getting bigger and bigger, bro, yeah. for real. I'm going be, I'm to be your first fan, bro. I'm going to be like, yeah, this nigga yeah. doing his thing. Yeah, yeah. I think nigga, nigga, oh, nigga, he got that. Nah, I'm like, that nigga ain't shit. That nigga ain't shit. I'm like, nah, this nigga selling CDs, yeah. bro. He doing his thing. Bro, bro, I've met a lot of niggas like that. Like, oh, so and so. That nigga ain't shit. I'm like, damn, that nigga's some sour ass motherfucker. Bro. A lot of people. I'm like, telling you, bro. You, yeah. you're, I've been disappointed a lot, bro. Yeah. Some, a lot of them don't even smoke. They don't even drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, damn, motherfucker, you talking about you smoking the real? We're talking about like, like, doing like rappers talking yeah, 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 about yeah. Yeah. songs yeah. Yeah. Like, They're not real, bro. They just capping in the studio type shit. Hey, uh, yeah. You, you got one? I know you got a few more questions. I know we got some oh, time. Oh, yeah, shit. I, 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 I got one for him. Or you got yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to make it back because we going down. Um, you kind of talk, touched on it a little bit, but like we were talking off camera as far as what you think of the data, because you were talking about the data scene, how it came up. Talk about the data scene today, what you think of it from the A&R and manager eyes that you have. I think it's, 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 a, it's ready for a change, bro. I think it's ready for a change because there's always been, there's two sides, and I'm, I, I explain this and people get confused. So the only way I can explain this. Listen up. 
for people to understand, it's kind of weird. But you got your mainstream rap in Dallas, and then you got your hip hop rap in Dallas. Yeah. So when I say mainstream, you got your Yellow Beezies, your Trap Boys, your Mo Threes, uh, your Dallas artists that are getting played like on 104.97.9. Yeah. Then you got your Dallas artists that are hip hop, that are lyricists, that are not getting played, yeah. but they're hot, bro. They're hot on Spotify, yeah. uh, SoundCloud. They in the clubs, in certain clubs, hip hop yeah. clubs, they hot. So you got you got two circles out there. And right now, I think there's, there's about to be a transition in, in the city of Dallas where this mainstream is gonna is gonna break down and it's just gonna turn into one big bubble. Well, the lyricists to pop in. The, the lyricists yeah. gonna pop in and be yeah. part of the mainstream because Dallas, I think Dallas wants to hear more, bro. Mm -hmm. I think Dallas wants to hear more. I think uh, the stations, both stations that we have in Dallas, even though e even K and Win, I think they're gonna they'll start playing more independent artists like that whole hip hop other scene that we have in Dallas. I think we're gonna open the doors up for that too. So I think it's time for a change, man. Because I know for a long time we were oh these are only three artists that we have in Dallas or these are only one artist we have in Dallas. No, dude, we have a lot of artists in Dallas and a lot, in the city. a lot of times in the city. And it was always broken down because of what you heard on the radio. Well, I only hear two names on the radio, so that's all God has got. No, there's, <laughs> there's a whole group of guys that, that are not getting played, mm. but they're so, they're making numbers, bro. They're making moves and they're creating a big sound in yeah. Dallas. They just never got the love. I think that's about to come in the city, yeah. and it's gonna it's gonna affect the radio very yeah. soon. I, and I see that. I, can I see think people need to open their ears and open their eyes because it's about to open up big. Yeah. Cause we have a lot of talented artists in the D of Dub, bro. We're top, we're top. And it's not gonna be about the top two or three no more. It's gonna be about the top ten, top, top 20. twenty. Yeah, top yeah. twenty. It'll be like co the yeah. college rankings, top twenty. It's gonna be like that, bro. Because what I see as a retailer, I see everything. I see, I see, I see the mainstream artists out of Dallas, and then I see the underground rappers out of Dallas. I see them both as a retailer. And a lot of people are like they, they disagree with me. Ah, oh, man, you tripping, bro? Them niggas are trash. They're trash to you because yeah. you don't listen to them. Yeah. Me, I got different clientele. So my clientele by the mainstream artists yeah. like the Mo 3s, the Yellow Bees, the Trap. I keep bringing the same three because those are the three that are always on 97K14. So I use them as an example. Yes, people come by them, but at the same time as a retailer, people are asking for these independent artists too. Yeah. So that's, I, that's why I say I think, it's, I think the city of Dallas is about to open up bigger where they're going to see more artists blowing and I think the stations, both all three stations in Dallas, are about to open the doors up for these independents to come in. Who are a few of those artists? Uh, you got Jason Lyric. Okay. Uh, you got a man. Like I said, they're, they're underground, bro. Put him on spot, my man. He definitely put me I, on I, spot. I, 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 think, I, th I think he got a little uh, the contact I got him, man. My bad. That Zaza. That, nah, fuck yeah. that. <laughs> now you got a you got caution. Okay. You got a Jabbar. Okay. Jabbar, he's a hip hop head, big time. Uh, you got Cam Bond. Some good names out there. Uh, man, if, if you go to Deep Ellum Road, and there's a lot of these hip hop events. Yeah, lot, like Dada, Adada. Adada. Yeah. A lot of these guys are, are doing their thing, and they've been around yeah. for a while. Yeah. And there's a lot more, bro. I'm just dealing with some top of the My bad. Yeah, yeah that's my bad. Do you but got the music at tea time? I got, I got so, the music on mixtapes. Oh, okay. Because they're not doing mixtapes. Yeah. They're on... Um, SoundCloud and they got their singles on yeah. on Apple and all that, Spotify, but they're not Spotify. dropping mixtapes because yeah, yeah. they're like, why drop them? Because we don't have that audience. Yeah. yeah. Because the mainstream guys have that audience, so yeah. why even waste our time? Which is cool. I understand that, but I told them yeah. if you would have had your CDs, I would have been your your, your fan <laughs> and help you push those CDs. Yeah, yeah. But of course yeah. they don't know that. But you know it's all good because yeah. if you go to my mixtapes. I'm gonna put all the main guys yeah. in all that other circle. So I'm putting both circles on my mixtapes mm. because I want people to guys not to just hear about three artists. I want them to hear about 15, 20 different yeah. artists yeah. from the DFW. Yeah. And he, he repping Dallas to the fullest. Got the Dallas tag, got the Dallas on his hand, and got the DSR tattoo. Oh yeah, man. D Town baby triple D bro. DFW, Dub, over here. Yeah, DFW shit. Shout out to my fucking town yeah. brothers, man. Definitely, bro. Definitely. Shit up. Uh, I know you're talking about like you said they don't want to they don't fucking yeah, shout out to Red Motor Soldiers. You said uh, they don't want to put like their singles out. Yeah, they're not. They don't want to be heard. But uh, no, they don't want to be uh, heard. It's just that I mean they don't think they're gonna get heard. Nothing's gonna hurt because, because everyone's stuck yeah. on the mainstream rap out of Dallas. Yeah. 
Because like you know, when, when I mentioned mainstream yeah. rap earlier, this ain't going back to the early 2000s. Mm. So you would hear the Fat Pimps and the Doski G's. So at that time, those were the mainstream artists. Like the boogie shit. The boogie the shit. Day, yeah. But there was another group of artists that were hip hop yeah. that never got to get in that circle because they weren't boogie, yeah. they were just hip hop. So there's always been two circles in Dallas, two group of uh, rappers, but it's never been like one big ass circle. Yeah. So when I say mainstream right now, I just think that bubble's about to bust. It's gonna have both bubbles into one big old yeah. bubble. That's my thing. That's why a lot of these artists, they wouldn't, they don't go to a certain scene yeah. because they're gonna be like, why well, go to that scene? That's not my scene. Yeah. That's their scene. Yeah. But yeah. I think their music is growing mm -hmm. that people, people are gonna hear more real shit. People gonna wanna hear some different shit, shit. And, and, and fuck around and say, you know what, I like them too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you go to some of these artists that I just mentioned, they got great music, but mm -hmm. like I said, they just don't get hurt because yeah. they're not in that mainstream. Yeah. You know, boat. Exactly. I feel what you're saying, bro. It's just like your music, bro. It's like let's say, and let's, let's throw you in. Let's, yeah. let's throw you in the mix. So let's say I'm, I come out of Utah. Yeah. And I move to Texas. Yeah. Shout out Salt Lake City. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I'm from Utah. I want to hear some Latin rap. Yeah. All I know is SPM. Yeah. That's the mainstream art. That's yeah. all I know. I know sure. one guy. That's it. Yeah. I hear, I hear Carolina. That's all I hear. Yeah. yeah. Somebody gonna come up to you and say, bro. Chelo, who's Chelo? Yeah. Man, check out Chelo. Oh, okay. Check him out on YouTube. With check him out on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so now we turn on some different shit. So everybody always has that main rap that everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah but there's so true. much other shit I hear. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. soon as they start hearing Chelo and the Renaissance and all these yeah. other guys, they're like, man, hold up, it's a whole different ball game out yeah. here. It is. DFW's got a lot of a lot of great artists out here. It just People yeah. need to do their research, bro. Expand the mind. Yeah, because yeah. it, it's crazy how, as listeners, we'll expand our mind when it comes to Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, new artists of Atlanta, everybody jumps and buys a CD yeah. just because Gunna said so. That's how a lot of or just because NBA now, said so, or just because Future yeah. said so. But nigga, yeah. if I say, hey, nigga, support my boy shit. Oh, man, just nothing. Bro, I'm, 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 rap, I'm still on my you know shit, bro. Like, I grew up listening to all that Texas shit, so yeah. like, when I rap, like, I'm still. I still got that influence, you know what I mean? I grew up listening. It's a to, scene, bro. To it's a that, scene, bro. bro. It's like people didn't understand. Right. People like, like I had a conversation the other day with an artist. Well, not an artist. It was a, it was a fan of music, and he was like, "Bro, it's cool. Texas art is cool, but they all sound the same, bro. They always talk about that Texas sound." I said, "It's a culture down there, bro. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not down with the culture, I understand. Go listen to your Kevin Gates and your yeah. NBA and your Future. Yeah, but yeah. if you want to get into our culture." This is our culture. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, our Dallas rappers or DFW rappers, we have something different too. Yeah, we don't we don't all rap coming down, swinging, yeah, drinking. Yeah, yeah. We have other rappers that talk about the Atlanta shit too. Yeah, the dancing, yeah. the whatever. You know what I'm saying? Strippers. Atlanta, Atlanta, you know Atlanta got the strippers. The mobile rap. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Yeah, you know we we have it all down here in Dallas, bro. But not a different variety. Just there's a variety, bro. Yeah. But a lot of people are like, oh man, I just don't fuck with Texas Dallas music because. There's only, I said, nah, nigga, it's not just Was this stuff. online or was this in person? Nah, it's in person, bro. Oh. It was in my store, bro, because oh, I was you. trying to turn people on to some. I got the you. guy was from out of town. I got you. And, hey, but, and I had a Texas mix. Yeah. And the guy was like, were they from the South? Or like, no, they were from Lubbock. Oh, okay. They were from Lubbock. And, and, I, had, and, I, had, and I, had, I had a Texas mix. And I said, hey, y'all got this brand new Texas mix. It's got all new Texas shit. Nah, man, I don't need to sound. They say the same shit on the songs. I said, it. bro, it's a culture. This is a culture that yeah. these Texas artists rap about. So I understand if you don't like it, but it's not that they're stuck in one spot, but this is the culture they're rapping about. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. don't like that culture, then I got you, bro. Mm. I got this other CD, that CD, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just trying to let you know, hey, I got this Texas mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the first thing he said, like, yeah. man, I don't want to hear no Texas music because all that circle sounds the same. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. all right, that's cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. You must have moved here from somewhere. How you be from Lubbock? Trying to hang up with some Texas shit. Right? Oh, what the fuck? What I was trying to get with that question, though, about like the singles and all that was like, what do you recommend like like these artists now like dropping their music? Do you recommend them like just put a single on, on like Spotify or that? Yes. Or an EP or a whole album? album. What, what do you recommend? Album. No EP, yeah. no no album. Just, just drop a single and work the fuck out of that single yeah. for three to six months. Okay. Okay. Cause this is what happens, bro. Yeah. They, and, and, I, and I always gotta use yeah. my own as an example. Yeah. Because it's the only way that I can break it down mm. and people can understand me. Oh, I can't believe he touched the rap. Mm. And they go, oh, okay. Yeah. OG. But 
we branded the single. Yeah. So the single would live for 20 years. Yeah. So Cheddar Loke had a single in 2005 that was blazing. Yeah. And he's still doing shows on that shit. The it's still it, getting played. So it's yeah. still, that's yeah. his single. Mm. So it, that because that was branded. That was yeah. marketing. That was promotions. Yeah. So a lot of these artists that, that are new that are coming out, I said, bro, you got to find your single and brand it because yeah. that's going to be your staple song for years. Not for now, for years. She just talked yeah. about doing a yeah. Yeah. last night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like brand that single. Yeah. As soon as it's the biggest thing and you're ready for the next single, yeah. you brand that single. Oh, nigga, but I got 800 songs. Mm. Nigga, I don't give a fuck with your 800 songs, nigga. <laughs> give me one hit. Yeah. Give me one hit yeah. to jam right now, nigga. I want to play that bitch, drink to it, or yeah. play that bitch, go to the club and jam the hell. Yeah, yeah. I don't care about your 800 songs, bro. Yeah. And see, that's when people get confused. Like, they don't give me an album. Don't yeah. give the industry an album. Yeah. Because you're new. Yeah. So if you're trying to win my ear, you're not going to clutter my ear with 800 songs. Yeah. You need to give me a song that can jam just like these other songs that I'm jamming on the radio. Yeah. If I'm listening to K104 right now, you give me a song that sounds just as good as K104, yeah. that's the single you need to fuck with, yeah, bro. Yeah, and man, run same, with it, bro. Same. And as soon as you got everybody on your shit, six yeah. months from now, a year from now, then you go to your next single. Yeah. But don't be like, oh man, I got an album, bro. You need to check out all these songs. Yeah. Cause then you're not even pushing your single. Yeah. You're trying to cram down 20 songs into yeah. someone's head. You, and the niggas like, man, nah, man. Yeah. Come on, bro. They, they, they might have liked the first one for a quick second, but you just jam 19 other songs in their face. Mm. Oh man, Because people got a short attention span. <laughs> short, days. exactly. Like, there's so much new shit, the flood, all that flood from the internet, like, yeah. oh shit. It's funny, bro. Move on to the if you look at iTunes, yeah. if you look at SoundCloud, bro, there's a new artist coming out every day, bro. And it's their singles that are coming out. Yeah. They're not dropping an album, they're dropping a single. Yeah. So you're competing with 20 new singles yeah. every week. Yeah. So if your single can be part of that 20, bro, yeah. promote that single for yeah. a long fucking time. Damn. You, your song would not be part of that 20 because you trying to promote a whole album. Yeah. Like, nigga, you man, in the wrong business. Nigga. I was about to drop a new album, now you make me think. <laughs> just drop a number of singles, bro. I mean, yeah. let's say, for example, yeah. you tell me you got an album coming out. Yeah. And I'm like, why not? And, and I'm going to say, hey, what's your single? Yeah. What's your, and you tell me, well, this is my single right here. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, who's playing the single? Is all the clubs playing it? Mm -hmm. You're like, no. Nah. It was the video app, this has got like a million views already? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, then why are we dropping now? Mm -hmm. We need to concentrate all the concentration on that single. Mm -hmm. Let's get your let's get your million viewers mm -hmm. on that video. Yeah. Let's get the song on the radio. Mm -hmm. And then the buzz is so big, you can drop them out. Yeah. Because you have the followers' attention yeah. on your single. Like, damn, I can't wait till they drop this album because this whole right here is fire. I wonder yeah. how the rest of this album gonna be. But you don't even have them there yet, but you're trying to hurry up and drop the album like yeah. why? What do you think they'll drop an EP or album? Like when you when when an artist drops, should they drop an EP or album? Because a lot of a lot of niggas. I don't, don't like, like EPs. EPs I don't like EPs. Yeah. But now I see I see more EPs online yeah, that's what for I'm four ninety nine. So if you're gonna do an EP, yeah. four ninety nine, five six songs. Yeah. R&B artists are dropping like like Money Long. She just dropped an EP mm -hmm. with seven eight songs. Four five ninety nine. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But nigga, don't try to charge me eleven ninety nine for fucking for, 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 for an EP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah, that shit, yeah, bro. Uh -huh. Do your fans yeah. right, bro. Charles Lee got three ninety nine or four ninety nine yeah. for the EP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds good. You do that, yeah, cool. Yeah. But really, yeah. I would concentrate on single. Put all your money on a single, bro. Mm. And if you got an album, bro, just knock out all your visuals. Mm. Promote the fuck out of your thing. And whoever's got the most fucking uh, views, mm. that's your single, bro. Yeah. And run with that hoe. Yeah. And try not to promote nothing else. Even though you have all your videos out, promote that single that has the most views yeah. out of all your videos. So you talk about singles and all that, like like some of the old shit, it made me think like, like on my shit, like most of my streams, it's all from my old shit, bro. Like I've been putting out new shit too. And it's always the old shit that's like, it's gross. Gross. It's gross. Gross. that's it, That's always going to be, yeah. that's always going to be Texas. Yeah. Because if you listen, listen and bro, shout out to Slim Thug, bro. Slim Thug. Slim Thug. My nigga Thug. drops an album every yeah. six months. Yeah. Yeah. But when you go to his concert, he's going to do the same six songs from 10 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago. True. Yeah. Those are the classics. Yeah. So you can drop albums all day right now, yeah. but niggas are always going to bump your old shit all yeah. the time. Like when you go see a Slim Thug concert or a Bum Beat concert, yeah. he gonna give you 10 of his classics. Yeah. That's what people wanna hear. They don't wanna hear your new shit. You can drop new shit all day, but they just wanna hear your old shit. Your yeah. old shit's always gonna be your classics. Damn. So your old shit's gonna always get more streams, more views, 
that's just the way people in Texas are. We love yeah. that classic sound. Yeah, so yeah. We love that 2000, yeah, 2005, that that 2010 thing. classic sound. That we just love that, that shit. Man, we love oh, that yeah, shit, bro. It's a hard time. Like, nigga, if I'm in a car, man, I could be in a car right now jamming some future. Yeah. I'm, I'm bumping, I'm jamming yeah, some Drake. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. I hear Fat Pat, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> man, I hear Chops Drop, yeah. I'm losing my mind yeah. right now. I hear Lil Kiki yeah. Southside, yeah. I'm gonna go crazy because yeah. that's a classic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's just the way Texas people are. I don't know about everybody else, but yeah. Texas, we always gonna like the older shit better. Yeah. Always. Makes and, that, and that's how we win is DSR. Yeah. Yeah. Because when DSR perform, if it's Lil Ronnie or Fat B or Tucker, Tom Tom or Dixon or Ronnie, yeah. Double T, uh, any of those guys, they're always gonna perform the classics. Mm. I don't know if you looked at uh, Jim Jones was uh, in an off-white uh, fashion show mm. last week. And they redid throw, uh, throwbacks mm. where Fat B and Lil Roddy was on. We did that record in 2003. Yeah, yeah. They took the vocals and they added a different beat to it. Mm. They're playing that in London. Oh, shit. During a, a different and, beat. And it was the Fat B? It was the Fat B and yeah. Lil, Lil yeah. Roddy. It's yeah. Lil Roddy. Yeah. You know, it, it has yeah. that, his verse. Mr. 5 To a different yeah. beat? To a different beat. Yeah. Oh. A brand new beat. Dope. But this was yeah, Jim yeah. Jones's. Fashion show, off white fashion in show London. Right? in London. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, that, that show is going from London to Paris to all these. Dope. I mean, these shows are all over. But it's what I'm saying. Oh, people Europe. people oh, are using classics and redoing them. Yeah. So you can use your very first single, who might have been. What year you come out? Shit. What was the first album you dropped? I think the first album I dropped was like in 2013, 2014, okay. bro. What was your what record was that in 2013? That, that all of a sudden you're like, hold up, everybody. Oh, Shit, the up. one that kind of made me like oh, give me like a little buzz in the city was riding in a circle. Okay. Riding right. in a circle. So you get riding in a circle, you get the acapella, yeah, and you take that hook and redo a song out of it. Was, was before, oh, right. and, yeah. and you redo it. You use that. You use a verse out of there and make it a hook. And yeah. revamp like like the screw hook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. gonna love that record again yeah. because they remember they gonna go back to 2002. Like man, 2013, boy, I remember that hook. Kind of remix it. That's how it. Yeah. You get me? Next week will come soon. Come <laughs> see Jordan Lopez, bro. <laughs> Real talk, man, bro, shit. Man, I think I'm gonna need you on here again, bro. You got so much <laughs> definitely game, do, bro. man. So much true spill. Real yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, See, I, I got more questions. We got no, time. No, I actually, actually, as he's talking, that's what I'm thinking about. But that was just him as a businessman yeah. setting himself up. You know, like, hey, I put it out there. You know, if you're smart enough to catch it, yeah. you know, that's that's Dude, what it is. It's free game, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's free game. When you call me later, then it's a thousand dollars. Just to talk to me, bro. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I charge, bro. Money's time. I was going to ask you, too, because I know you do... Uh, you take payments. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Cash app. You take sale. Because hey, I, I know you do uh, uh, other stuff, but what are some of the... Uh, like, right now, we're talking... What do you manage it right now? Uh, I manage music? I manage different artists. So, let's say, example, there's a new artist who, who, who's about to drop a single, an album, whatever. And he's like, George, I need some help in the game. Yeah. I need a manager. I said, okay, one thing, you don't need a manager. I'm a person that, I'm a marketing promotional company that's gonna help you, mm. not really a manager. A manager is when you got shit popping, mm. people are calling you to do features and shows and you need appearances and that, that's a manager. Mm. You're not ready for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you need is someone that's gonna market you and promote you right now. Mm. That's what my company does, Gym Music Group. That's what you see the yeah. Gym, J-I-N. Yeah. That's my marketing company. Like, and like street promotion. We do street promotions, promotions online yeah. promotions. Yeah. We get you on podcasts, yeah, yeah, yeah. we get you on interviews. On bloggers, yeah. we, just, we get you out there to give me different people yeah, yeah. That, that'll network with you. Yeah. And see, that's what I do. So I got that company, I got T Town, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm still doing the management with different artists like Tuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If a DSR show comes up, I'll call the guys, we do a DSR show. If uh, a lot of these Dallas uh, clubs in Dallas, they'll call me like, yo, I need Slim to do a show. I'll call Slim, I'll call his manager, Heavy, hey, Heavy, I need Slim over here. You know what I'm saying? If I need Flip, I'll get a hold of Flip, say, hey man, they want you in Dallas, whatever, yeah. whatever. Anybody, bro. I'm just reaching out to people that I know. Yeah. So I'm always doing a little bit of everything. People are like, oh, you're not the manager. Not I'm not the manager, man. but yeah, yeah, yeah. I know these niggas. Yeah. So it's like, I can make a phone call. Yeah. Like, Yo. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, Because my thing is, I'm not going to let them niggas lose money. Yeah. You know, if a nigga says, man, I'm trying to get a hold of a Houston artist. Mm -hmm. Shit, who you want? I, I, I can call all of them. For sure, I need the plug on the major. You know what I'm saying? Holler at my boy G Lo. You know what I'm saying? So, Get your money right first, though. Yes, yes, Make sure yes. your money's right. Then holler at my nigga. Right Gotta got have some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Bro, how was it coming up like during that Swisher House time? Like the DSR came up at the same time. Yeah, it was that's like a classic period of Texas rap. Swish how House, was that? Swish House was '98. Yeah, DSR was 2001. Four years later, yeah. but that '98, I was blessed to be a part of that. Bro. Yeah, uh, I had just opened up my Tea Town Number Two on Buckner. Yeah, and OG and Ron C. I know you had Tea Town. Yeah, too. it was on Buckner, bro. Yeah. It was a storefront. Yeah, uh, brick and mortar shop. Yeah, so. I'm on Buckner, I just opened up my tea town number two, mm. me and my brother, and uh, OG Ron C gives me a call, he's like, hey bro, uh, I got a label out here in Houston, we trying to, we trying to take off yeah. in Dallas, yeah. everyone else with all your hookups, yeah. we hot in Houston, but yeah. we trying to branch out, man, we're, we're, we got a company called Swisher House, bro. Mm. it's me and Michael Watts and G-Dash, you know, yeah. we trying to do our thing, yeah. we need your help pushing our music, mm. I'm like, bro, I don't even listen to Screw, you need yeah. Screw music, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't listen to that. Yeah. I'm known for No Limit, bro, because yeah. I've been a No Limit fan, so yeah. I'm up with No Limit. Yeah, bro, just check it out. You're on that bounce shit. Yeah, I'm yeah. on that bounce. Yeah. I'm on all that shit, that uh, fast shit. 3 6 yeah. Mafia. I'm on that Memphis shit. Yeah. Shout out 3 6, shout out yeah. Memphis. I mean, I love yeah. Memphis music, so I was yeah. bumping Tom Ski Mask. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All them bands. All that shit. All that shit, bro. Yeah. So he's like, bro, help me push Switch House, bro. Yeah. That shit's gonna sell itself, bro. It's yeah. that real Texas shit. All right, yeah. cool. So he brought me like 200 pieces, bro. We mm. laid it out of my store, start playing it. Mm. Niggas like, oh shit, y'all got the Houston shit? I'm like, y'all niggas know about it? Like, oh yeah, DJ Screw. I said, no, this is Michael Watts. He's on the north side. Yeah, he yeah. got Screw and Chop too. Yeah, oh, yeah. let me get that shit. So they start bumping it. All of a sudden, start selling. Yeah. Both stores selling like crazy. Yeah. And it just, it took on like wildfire, bro. Yeah. So all of a sudden, we selling Screw and Chop like crazy. So kind of blew up. it just blew yeah. up, bro. It was like it, yeah. out of my hands, it blew up, bro. Yeah. It wasn't something I just did. I, yeah. just, I just put it out there for yeah. my customers. And everybody wanted the true yeah. chop. The Kappa Beach yeah. uh, was coming. It was always a Kappa Beach party. Yeah, yeah. mixtape like, dropped. After the Kappa type shit. After the Kappa yeah, yeah. dropped the mixtape. Yeah, your fuck actions. Yeah, yeah. All, these, <laughs> all these different yeah. screw chop pieces yeah. coming out. Niggas were just coming in buying them, bro. Yeah. So everyone was just daring you to come to yeah. T Town, bro. And, it just blew up, yeah. bro. So all that shit is all that shit is what made me want to rap. Hearing all the freestyle. Yeah. That's what kind all of that became influential for all yeah. the culture. For, for my generation. Yeah, yeah. I'm, saying, I'm an eighties baby of eight eighty eight. Yeah. So for my generation, bro, like that kinda like that's what, what I grew up listening to. And a lot of niggas like my age grew up listening to yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. It kind of influenced us a lot, bro. So yeah, yeah, that's that's legendary. And I know DSR had a lot of screwed and chopped uh, uh, tapes too, right? Yeah, yeah, we dropped a lot. We, yeah. we, we dropped like 34 mixtapes. Yeah. So we dropped 34 yeah. mixtapes. I, I, I had a lot of them hoes, uh, screwed and chopped yeah. one. We Who did it? Was it OG Ron C that did it? Well, OG Ron C did one. Yeah. Uh, Switch, uh, Michael Watts did yeah. a couple remixes for yeah. us. DJ Yellowboy was our DJ. Okay, yeah, I remember Yellowboy. Yeah. You had DJ Yellow Curious too? Yeah. DJ Curious yeah. did the first yeah. five, six mixtapes. He did our first five or six mixtapes, then DJ Yellowboy came in. Mm -hmm. DJ Yellowboy was Slim Thug's DJ, and he became available for me. Yeah. So as soon as he became available, he became a full-time DJ for us. He's out of Houston? At, he's out of uh, Conroe, which is outside of Houston. Yeah, yeah, no, on the north side type shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I met him. And he was like, bro, I do all that. And he, he was old. Oh, yeah, like, man, we got a photo with you. It was a marketing yeah. idea because the reason yeah. it was a marketing yeah. idea for me is like, yeah. why am I not going to use yeah. Slim Thug's DJ? Everybody already knows. Yeah. So when I used him, our CD sold faster because he already had that market mm -hmm. because he was already known for Boss Hog Outlaw DJ. Boss you know Hog Outlaw. Yeah. So when you heard their mixtape, DJ yeah. Yellow Boy, they started hitting him on the DSR. Yeah. Like, hold up, man, these things together or what? So it was a marketing yeah. idea that I was like, you know what? Networking two different companies together, people right. gonna think we're all the same company. You know what? <laughs> I was one of the first DSR song I heard. I think it was that man. Hold up, hold up, up. DSR nope. got the same. I think it was the Squid and Chop version. Yeah, who did that? Yellow boy. Uh, that? who did the Squid and Chop version of that one? Man, I don't even remember, bro. Cause Cap at the Bomb yeah. did some Squid yeah. and Chop for us That's too. Cool. Damn, though. So I forgot who did that yeah. one, man. But that was on our Respect to Check It Out, which is Fat yeah. B and Tum Tum's album. Yeah, yeah. Check that it was out. our first that official check. single that was yeah. the original track. Yeah. My brother in law, Freestyle, yeah. produced that one. Because all the other ones before that were freestyles, right? Freestyles. freestyles. Yeah. Freestyles. Bro. Yeah. Shit, man, I, you got so much shit that DSR put out that I'm like, fuck, I want to talk about all that <laughs> shit. But, uh, like, the first one that's coming to mind is like, uh, how did Southside the Realist come out, bro? Man, like, how did that come about? 
Like, that's, that's a legend. That's, that's a crazy right. story, bro. And people are gonna laugh at me. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm embarrassed to say yeah. this, but I'm gonna keep it real. Yeah. Because it's the fact. It's True. the fucking fact. Yeah. And people are like, George, I can't believe you. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the fact. I'm gonna tell you the truth, bro. And they're gonna look. Up, people are gonna look at me different. But I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so we did the Tuck album in 2003. Was, was it the Purple Hulk? Purple Hulk. Purple Hulk. Yeah. We did. We did Purple Hulk in 2003. We didn't drop the album until 2004. Cause respect the check it album was still doing fucking good. We were on tour. Tuck and Fat were on tour. And Tuck was with us. But Tuck yeah. and I mean Tum Tum and Fat B was on tour. Respect the check it. So we're traveling. And Tuck's like, man, when we gonna record my album? I said, you're next, bro. So when we when we finally get to record his album, he knocked out his album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So before I get into that story, so he's like, we're gonna drop our album. I was like, we're gonna drop it 2003. The summer 2003. So we get to summer 2003, respect the check is still doing real good. Tum Tum is on fire, Fat B's on fire. I don't want to kill that buzz. Mm -hmm. Even though I got six artists ready to drop yeah. albums and mixtapes, yeah. I told Tuck, wait, bro. I said, Tuck and Fat, man, it's blazing, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So Tuck's like, we wait, we wait. I said, bro, when we finish with this tour, we drop your album, mm -hmm. you're going to be fucking huge, bro. Just Believe me, just yeah. take my word. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I just want people to pass on me, bro. Yeah. We're not gonna pass on me, bro. So, so Fat B and Tum Tum, we're doing good. A year and a half later, we dropped South Side of Rhythm. Oh, okay, no, no, let me go back. Yeah. So I go back to listen to the go back and listen to the tracks. So I think on the album, there's 19, 20 records. There's two versions of South Side of Rhythm, the long version, the short version. But I think there's 20 records on there. But in the studio, we actually have 25. I'm like, bro. 25 minutes? 25 records. Oh, okay. I'm like, bro, some of this shit's whack, yeah. bro. Yeah. And that's one thing about me. Yeah. I could be wrong, yeah, but yeah. I was the type of nigga I would tell Tuck straight up, yeah. I don't like that shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. And me and Tuck would argue, like, no, bro, that was hard, bro. I'm like, that shit's yeah, whack, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that shit off. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was, we go down to like 19 records, bro. Tuck's family. 19 records. We keep a, we keep a second version of South Side of the Rose, which is the long version. Yeah. And, uh, Hold on, let me check. And uh, so we talking, yeah. and I hear this Southside of Rillers record. Yeah. I hear the Tupac beat, yeah. kind of a Master P beat. Cause yeah. Remember Master P reused it also. Yeah. I'm like, that beat go hard, but nigga, who cares about just South Dallas, nigga? That's all you talking about, <laughs> South, 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 South. And then he's naming yeah. all his homeboys yeah. from South Dallas. Yeah. He's naming his neighborhood. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, all you're doing is putting yourself in a, you're isolating yourself into a box. Yeah. You're not talking about the whole city yeah. or all those Texas. You, you're just talking about South Dallas yeah. only. Yeah. I'm like, bro, that record is not gonna work, bro. Yeah. He said, bro, I promise you, bro, that record's gonna work. I said, bro, Man. no, it's not, bro. So we 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 sit in the studio talking, bro, and I and I'm and I'm, and I'm disagreeing with him, bro. It's like, bro, that record's not gonna go nowhere. It's, that record's gonna stay a Dallas record, bro. That's it. Because niggas in South Dallas gonna love it. But yeah. That's it. What about the niggas on the West Dallas? They're not gonna like it. Niggas in North Dallas ain't gonna like it. Yeah. He said, nah, bro, everybody gonna love it. I said, nah, nah. You prove me wrong, bro. That record came out fucking was huge. Yeah. Even yeah. now, bro. Man, so I mean, I say it all the time, bro. I'm not, I'm not perfect, bro. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a, at, at a point. If I say, if I'm feeling a certain way yeah. at a certain point, I'm gonna say what I feel. I could be wrong. Show me you're wrong. Yeah. Show me that I'm wrong. That's cool. I can take that. A lot of niggas won't take that. They like play that hoe at the club. Shit, the club be going wild when that hoe drive, bro. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. <laughs> but. I mean, I always tell people that story. People are like, "What, George?" I said, "That was wrong, bro." It's it's wrong. Wrong. Tuck, wow. Tuck had he, he had in his mind that record was be a big yeah. record. You know, what I'm saying there was a lot of records that we had because Southside Rhythm wasn't the first single we dropped. We dropped T U C K, which was the freestyle. Mm -hmm. We dropped it's a big T U C K. We dropped that first. Yeah, yeah, we I dropped that first. Yeah. That was on a mixtape. Yeah. It was on a bunch of mixtapes, yeah. and we used that for 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 Purple Hulk. But we dropped that with Greg Street. Greg Street was the first guy to play our records that came on the floor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he became a real fan of our music and kind of helped us out and yeah. got us our radio play in Atlanta and which, everywhere. Which one came first? Not a stain on me or no, South Side Rhythm? Not a stain on me was 2009. Yeah. Okay. Was that on his second CD? That was on Hell Yeah, yeah. That was on Hell Yeah. That was on his third, fourth mixtape. And, and Tussle, that was on Purple Hook, right? Tussle was on Purple Hook. Yeah. Tussle was, was on Purple Hole. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know you want. You, uh, oh, wait, wait. You can't see me. Me. No, not, not that one. That was on. That was on Universal. Yeah, but, uh, yeah not that one. But uh, you can't see me. Yeah. Right, right now, three. Bro, that, that one was on Purple Hole too. too. With yeah. Lil Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Lil Ronnie. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. And don't yeah, see. Shout out to Lil Ronnie, man. That's yeah. the homie right there. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we had a lot of singles on that album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it was just crazy, bro. But the reason I was trying to say the story is because, man, I've been wrong, bro, on yeah. a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. And I, I don't sure. care what niggas say, bro. At the end of the day, yeah. ain't nobody be signing me telling me like, oh, George, this is a platinum hit. Nah, yeah. nigga, this yeah. is me thinking. Yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at you and like, is this the record? Uh, okay, yeah, let's roll with it or no, we're yeah. wrong with it. Well, I, think that, I think that music history has that. Uh, that's happened a lot of times from Pac to, yeah. to artists where they don't think it's gonna be a hit. And it, and it turns out no, to be. No, I think no, we no. talked about Big Pip and Pip C didn't want to be on it and yeah. tried to be one of the biggest yeah, records yeah. ever. That he only did like eight bars. Yeah, 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 we were talking about the last. He didn't want to do the whole sixteen on that shit. He didn't want to do the whole sixteen. Yeah, I mean, it's what I'm saying. Certain things, bro, you just not feeling. You don't know it's gonna be big, bro. Yeah. Like, like I said, you know, Pimp C's like, nigga, I don't want to do this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And it became, it blew him up across the world yeah. because it was thinking outside the box. Bumpy had the idea, like, nigga, let's think he outside the box. Vision. He saw a vision, like, we're gonna go from Texas to the world with yeah. this shit. Yeah. Pimp's like, nigga, I'm keeping it Texas. Like, nigga, keep it Texas on the record, mm. but we just gotta do the record. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So everybody sometimes doesn't see what you see. It's just, it's, it's. it's it's one of those things you have to take a chance. Or yeah. well, would have fucked me up if I would have pulled the record off and never released something. Yeah. Well, I would have kicked, kicked myself in the ass for years. <laughs> but like I said, I'm blessed yeah. enough to say, you know what? Fuck it, let's roll with it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And tell me, like, I promise you, Jordan, I promise yeah. you. And, that, and, that's, and that's what it is. But I mean, it, we've been the same thing with Tom Tom's records. Tom Tom has gave me some heat. Shout out Tom. Man, uh, Fat B. Yeah. You know, he had, he had some records, bro. Uh, he did the In, uh, in the Hood. Where it's uh, Tuck, like Fat B, kind of good, yeah, man, those that. are big records. Yeah. You know, Fat yeah. B came in the hook, he came in the studio with the hook and the verse, and then mm. and then Tum and then Tuck came in. I think I shot the video at, at, at Tea Time, right? We shot at Tea Time. Yeah. yeah, in front of the yeah. building, inside the building. Yeah. We shot yeah. that. Like I said, man, throwbacks, yeah. Fat B and Lil Ronnie, yeah. they set it off with that single. Yeah. Uh, Did I stutter, motherfucker? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tum Tum. You know, so it's like these records just, these guys just came up with just classic yeah. music, bro. Yeah. Hey, what, what, how did that, the name Dirty South Riders come about? Man, it's a crazy story, bro, because uh, I've always wanted to have a name to represent Texas. So it's like the Dirty South, okay? So I'm like, Dirty South, Dirty South, what? You know, and we're like, came up with Dirty South Riders. So, okay. Keeping it funky. So it took me. Probably about a month or two, bro. But it was it was crazy because uh, me and my wife at the time when I was married, I, we, we kind of talked about it, and we we're like, "Dirty South Rider sounds good." Because I was like, "Dirty South, Dirty South." We were like, you know what, Dirty South Rider sounds good. So yeah. we were like, okay, we yeah. we talked about. It. We were like, you know what, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Went back to training, training. Like, yeah, Dirty South Rider sounds good. So we had, we started asking everybody, like, "Dirty South Rider?" Like, yeah. So okay, what's the symbol, man? Okay, we gotta get. Like, we gotta get interstate symbol, bro. Mm. Get the interstate, we hit yeah. the road. Yeah. Right, we gotta right. show that interstate. We gotta throw Texas in the middle. Yeah. Everything's gotta, everything's gotta mean something. Yeah. So when you think of DSR, you gotta know we're from Texas because that's the Texas in the middle yeah. of the interstate. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, everything was just planning, yeah. bro. It was just inputs from different people. My wife said something. My, my cousin said something. Uh, different people uh, that was around us were like, "Yo, that's that, that's a good name." Uh, break it down DSR, okay, DSR, or something just spill out dirty South Riders, you know. It was just so, inputs, bro. It took time, bro. And, and see, that's a lot of, that's, a, that's, a, dope, that's another thing, bro, because I see labels now, crazy names don't make sense, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, I've seen, I've seen labels, bro. I, 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 there was a label in 2002, I think it was that, three. I already knew what he was doing, and I hate people with people's business out there. Yeah, yeah. But he put his own business out there. Yeah. His label was called Illegal Business. The fuck? No, it was called Illegal Records. Yeah. Illegal Money Records. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, bro, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. come on, bro. I said, you make it big, the feds are closing you down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, man, this is what I do, bro. I got all my shit from the dope. Oh, I'm like, why? Why are you telling people that? I'm gonna put them on the scope for real. Why are you telling people that, bro? You have to tell them. Oh, That's why I'm telling my boys like yeah. that, bro. That's wild, bro. But he was like, yeah, man. I was like, bro, it's just like certain things you have to just, you gotta be real, bro. You gotta be smart. Yeah, yeah. It's and business. It's, it's business. You know, and this dude right here, I mean, I don't even know if he's still in business, bro. But I remember him coming to me, bro. I'm like, yeah. bro, change your name. <laughs> and, and you couldn't yeah. tell him nothing because he had money, bro. Yeah. He had 
bracelets and brand new cars. Like, was, I don't give was, a fuck. He was with it, huh? He was with it, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna die hard to this shit. I'm like, nigga, you can be die hard to pin next year. <laughs> moving weight records. Type yeah, shit. bro. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. moving keys. Yeah, moving keys. Moving keys records. records. Down 35 entertainment. <laughs> yeah, shit, bro. I'm like, damn, bro. That's why I tell people, like, it, it, I got, we got blessed, bro. As, as a label, how many units? Uh, how many units do you think y'all sold? Like, man, well, the label T Town Music, man. Before DSR came yeah. out, bro, we already sold over three hundred thousand yeah. units yeah, before DSR. Yeah, this was just on the I forty five and North to the South yeah. albums. Those are two compilations that me yeah. and Trinity did yeah. with different artists. Yeah. And then when DSR came out throughout the years, man, I know we sold half a million units independently. Yeah, easy. Yeah, easy. Cause like I said, we were pumping CDs like a mother, bro. Mm. Pumping CDs. Yeah, yeah. And you know, all the guys will tell you, bro, yeah. we were, man, if we weren't selling them, we were giving them away. Mm. But that's one thing I told the guys, like, bro, sell them, put the money in the pocket. Mm. If not, they give it to them, nigga. I don't yeah, give yeah. a fuck. I don't wanna make yeah. sure we go to every city yeah. and make sure we leave, we leave an imprint in that city. Yeah. Like we yeah. go to these small towns like yeah. Lake Charles, Alexandria, yeah. Monroe, yeah. you know what I'm saying? El Dorado, Arkansas, Pine yeah. Bluff, Arkansas, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Man, yeah. we, we just give and see what you guys say, hey when you listen rap, yeah, yeah. check this shit out. Yeah. You don't like it, throw it out the window. Yeah. Here we go, nigga. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We were just giving shit away because yeah. at that time yeah. we knew promotions and marketing yeah. was our key, bro. Cause yeah. like they you can't give them fire mm. unless you start a fire. Mm. And we start a fire. Here you go, bro. Like that spark. Yeah, yeah. We had to start it, bro. So we were just giving it or we were selling it, bro. Mm. And like I said, we would I know you can't sell everything, but I know we're 50 50 most of the time. Yeah. Selling shit at the beginning. At the end, shit, we're 95% selling everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 95%. Yeah. But at the beginning, I told the guys that man, sell it. Yeah. You can't sell it, just give it to them, bro. Yeah. Cause I want that, I want to make sure we leave the small yeah. last town and they bump with our shit. Shit, how was it going out there? And they're like, damn, DSR, like, like they see niggas from Dallas and you're getting that love out there. How that? Oh feel, man, bro? I mean, like, so there was, there, there was, there's two places that was like our second home, Pensacola, Florida. Mm, uh, yeah. Roy Jones Jr. had a club okay. called Club 69. Yeah. Shout out Pensacola, Roy Jones. In Fort, Jones. Yeah. In Fort yeah. Walton. Yeah. And uh, he would book us out there. It would mm. be like us and. DJ Scrappy, yeah. I mean not DJ Scrappy, but uh, Little Scrappy, yeah, the yeah, artist, yeah. Little John's artist. Body had the tank. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. It was like all them. Like, he had yeah. major artists all the time. We were out there performing, and it was a trip because we pulled up in a van, and women would go crazy. DSR, and we're Damn. thinking like it's tripping. <laughs> yeah. It was like they niggas thought we were like Drake and shit. Yeah, yeah. They fucking yeah. throwing panties and shit, Damn. Things, and you know yeah. we're signing posters yeah, and flyers yeah. and getting bombarded. Yeah. It was crazy, bro. Yeah. And we were like, damn. <laughs> so <laughs> it, we at the gas station. Yeah. One time we went to Fort Walton. Yeah. We went to the gas station before we even got to the show. And it was these, it was these girls that like, man, who are y'all? Y'all like this group from Dallas. No, we like, who, who, what <laughs> group from Dallas? Yeah. Y'all like DSR. Yeah. And Tum Tum come out, baby, I am DSR. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. look real. <laughs> they were like, we are DSR. Yeah. And they were like, what? They yeah. started going crazy. They followed us all over the club. Yeah. So started bopping. Man, yeah. it was crazy. So yeah. Pensacola flow, we get like major flow like that. So our sec our second home mm. was like Ohio. Okay. We were Ohio. big. We were big in Ohio, yeah. bro. We we're huge, bro. You talking Ohio. about police escorts and shit, yeah. shutting down yeah. restaurants and yeah. shit. So we can go in there. Yeah. Niggas yeah. dropping off weed for the niggas to smoke. Like, here, nigga, on behalf of Cleveland, man. Yeah. That's that blue shit, bro. Dope. Yeah. I'm like, man, this shit's yeah. tricky, bro. Cause I never see shit like that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had we had yeah, cops following us, bro. Just like taking us to restaurants, yeah, yeah. to the hotel. Yeah. We went to Euclid, yeah. to high school, where Bone Thugs and Harmony Cleveland? went to school in Cleveland. Yeah. So we go to Cleveland, where Bone Thugs and Harmony went to school at, and we're like, yo, we want you to come talk to the kids, but you know, uh, we want you to come into the underground parking lot and come up. We're gonna bring them to a certain class and just talk to them. Well, of course, the van is wrapped. Mm. So when we pull up, I guess it's still, someone sees us. So by the time we get inside, get to the principal's office, oh man, you talking about a thousand kids already, they're already banging on the door, mm. they already jumped out of classes screaming DSR. <laughs> so the principal's like, y'all gotta leave. Y'all can't do this shit, y'all gotta leave. <laughs> so we're leaving, you're talking about kids following the van, we're just chucking out posters and flyers out the window. <laughs> <laughs> we can't stop because yeah. 
<laughs> bunch of kids, bro. That's crazy Whatever story. was this? Was this during uh, like this, Southside the Realist? No, nah, this is then? this is like respect of the check it Southside the Realist time, like two thousand three, oh, time four, yeah, yeah, like yeah. right before we got the deal. This is like I said, yeah. we were huge before the before deal, bro. Yeah. Before, way before Man, the deal. That's crazy, Cause we did a lot of work, bro. Yeah, we were it. we were on the road six days a week. Bro. Yeah, we were on the road six days a week. So yeah. we were in Youngstown, Cleveland, Cincinnati. We were in Detroit, we were in Chicago, we were, we, were the, we did the whole Midwest, bro. We were doing shows everywhere, and then it was fun because we get up there, we run into yeah. Devin Dude, yeah. we run into Kiki, yeah. we run into Michael Watts up there, we're like, yo, it's home, bro. We're like, oh, Texas, 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 Texas niggas up here too. Yeah, right? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, we just chilling, bro, yeah. like, damn. And we just get major love, bro. It's like, they would book Texas artists up there, bro. It's like, Ohio, that whole Midwest, and then Pensacola, it's like, that was, they were just like, all the time, just showing lots of love, bro. Like starstruck yeah. love. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's and even now, bro, Houston. It's a funny story, though. Even now, we go to Houston, bro. Yeah. It shows major love. It's yeah. like we get more love in Houston yeah. sometimes than Dallas. Yeah, sometimes, it's bro. crazy. It's just the way it is. It, it's always like that. It's, yeah. You're gonna get more love from the outside. You mm-hmm. know, people. Like, yeah. what, what, what did Jesus say? Uh, you, they don't look at you as a prophet unless you go out inside your hometown or something like that. Yeah. That's that's how matters though. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? Same to that. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh, what was I gonna tell you? Uh, what what other region other than the South, like Texas, do you think they that they show like love to like Texas or Man, uh, or like you got you got Denver. Man, Denver is huge. Denver. Shout out to Denver. Yeah. One thing about Tuck and Tum Tum, they were always doing the 420 shows yeah. up in Denver, Colorado, yeah. uh, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. You know, you going up. And like I said, I, and I think all that was paid mm-hmm. through SPM making his movement, you know, yeah. from, from the South always straight up and into the Midwest. Kind of paved the way for the Tahamas. Yeah, everybody go up. Yeah. Because before we got yeah. there, SPM had already made his wave. Mm. Switcher House had already made their wave. Mm. Slim Thug, Miller, Paul Wall had already made their wave. So when we got there, oh, we know who DSR is already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all need this feature on their shit. Yeah. So it's like, it was easy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm going back home. I'm telling local artists like, nigga, y'all need to go up there. Yeah, man, this shit costs a lot of money, man. Get a van, go out with us. Yeah. Money. I'm like, bro, this money be made up there, bro. I gotta start writing up the car shows out there. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I knew wouldn't go up there. Yeah. Bro. I'm like, bro, there's money up there. Big bro. market out there. Huh? Huge yeah. market because they're paying five times yeah. more than what we're charging down here. Yeah. So here we charging two, three thousand a show. Yeah. Over there, they're paying this ten grand a yeah. show. Just easy, bro. Yeah. Like, damn. Yeah. They're paying big money. Yeah. Because they know we have to travel. Yeah. So we're going, you know, Pensacola for that. We're going to the Midwest for that. Mm. I'm like, they paying top dollar. Yeah. And they, they got rooms and limo I mean, service. I bet they pay without no hesitation. Yeah, they ain't tripping, like, They ain't tripping. Cash out type like shit. Dallas, bro, you try to do a show now, them niggas want you free because you live in Dallas. <laughs> We ain't leaving the house, bro. Yeah. We ain't leaving yeah. the house. Bro. He, he said they want you to be free because you from yeah. the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, nah, bro. So yeah, it's it's a whole different game. But yeah, I think I think those are our biggest markets was the Midwest and like I said, Pensacola, Fort Walton, yeah, you know, Florida. That was a, a big market. And like I said, we sold a lot in Mississippi and Alabama, yeah. Louisiana. We sold a lot of units there too, bro. Mm-hmm. But I think that was a big market. I know Memphis was big for us because it was a radio station showing major love. Yeah. They showed a lot of Dallas love. One of the DJs from Dallas actually got a job in Memphis. He was at 107.1. Mm. I think it was Power 107.1. And because he was from Dallas, he showed a lot of love. So DSR got a lot of play. Uh, Houston got a lot of play out there. And that's what kind of broke our music in Memphis. Mm. So yeah, thank yeah. God uh, all the Tennessee was pretty lit yeah, yeah. On, on Dallas and yeah. Houston music. So I think we've always told love up. to each other yeah. over yeah, the back years. And forth. Back. I want to top it over, homie. I definitely want his info afterwards, though. Definitely. Yeah, let me. I got one more question. Shit, uh, yeah. Can we expect another DSR album? Like the whole group together? Uh, I think that's a good final. I, I, don't, I don't know if we'll drop a new DSR album. Mm-hmm. I know it's been asked. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I say this is just as a fan. You know? As a fan, as I know fan. everyone wants another yeah. DSR album. Yeah. I say it will come in the future. Yeah. I don't think it'll come now. Yeah. And the reason I don't think it'll come now, because right now there's a lot of touring going on. Uh, I know Tums in the studio, he's got collab albums coming out. Oh, Flip, he's right. got a new yeah. one coming out with Flip. Uh, he's got a couple albums coming out already that he's in the works with probably this whole year already. I know Fat B's working on some stuff right now. Uh, Ronnie's always working on something right now. 
Tuck is on tour. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, I know he's flying out this week to Cabo for two weeks. He does, he does spring break. Cowboy. Maple too? Yeah, yeah. He, does, yeah. he does Cowboy every, every year for spring break for two weeks straight. Tuck's so probably been to Maple more times than me. <laughs> so all the guys are busy, bro. So yeah. to get the guys to all come back to the studio. Yeah. And it's gotta be, it's gotta make sense. It's gotta make sense, bro. You just talked about that shit. You can't yeah. just go in the studio, oh, yeah. put a verse, put a verse in, yeah. let's go. Let's, let's, let's hey. do an album because we're all from Dallas. Exactly. <laughs> can we get Tuck in Michoacan? We can get for the right money. money. Hey, as long as the cartel went for us on the border, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, look like make sure they're good. Like, yeah. Yeah. Make sure they're good. Yeah. Make sure we good. Yeah. I'm not so, going. So, so you said it might. It, it might, but everybody. It might, this. but not this yeah. year for oh, sure. Because yeah. the reason I say not, I know yeah. for sure not this year because there's a lot of plans already yeah. laid out yeah. to the end yeah. of the year. Gotcha. So if, if it did, if there was a, a pack, if there yeah. was an album, it'd be probably later down in the future. Like I said, man, all the guys are still intact. All the guys are still cool. All the guys are still working. But I know right now, everyone's got a busy schedule. I mean, yeah. shoot, every time I call the guys for a DSR show, yeah. it's hard to put up for a show yeah. because right everyone's booked. Yeah. Everyone's booked and they get money. Yeah. So to, to kind of get everybody together to do one show, it's hard because if I call Tom, say, hey, Tom, I got a show, let's say June 1st, are you available? Yeah. I'm available. All right, Tuck, are you available? I'm available. Yeah. Fabi, oh man, I got to show that at a rig. Little right, I got to show that at two. I'm like, damn, we can't do the DSR show, yeah. so it's just gonna be a Tuck and Tum show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the next show comes up. We got a show in July. Tuck, I can't make it, I'm already booked. Yeah. Only Tums available. Mm. Only double T's available. Mm. You know, it's like it's hard to get everybody scheduled together on the right, on the right yeah, time. On the right yeah. time, bro. Yeah. So and it can't be a DSR show unless everybody's there. Yeah. yeah. So it's kinda of, it's hard, bro. When you have six yeah, guys, it's saying, it's real hard. So it's like people are like, oh but you put it out together. Bro, yeah. we're not gonna fucking just come yeah. and record some shit just because the fans want yeah. it overnight. It's not yeah. gonna happen. We wanna do shit right and take our time and make sure we get a year promotions marketing, write the, the, the right production, everybody take their time and write sure good shit. Right. You don't wanna rush some shit, bro. So it, it, we don't have to come down and take like fucking three months off and just go in the booth. Vibe on some together. Beatles Vibe. shit. Yeah. On some Beatles, some 3 yeah, 6 Mafia yeah, shit. Cut the camera on, let's, let's record for three months. North Texas Beatles. Yeah, yeah man. Yes, sir. Yeah, Doug. Yeah.